What's up, everyone? Welcome to This Day Philly Sports History for February 26, 2023. Let's go right into our Philly Sports Black History Spotlight. Today, we're going to talk about Will Chamberlain. Last month, we talked about the day he was traded to the Sixers. But Will Chamberlain, born in Philly, went to Overbrook High School, then out to Kansas. He was drafted by the Philadelphia Warriors in the special territorial draft that they had, uh, that loophole they had back then to kind of try to grow the game. Um, Because if you listen to the Back to the Future with my dad this week, which I highly recommend you do, he had mentioned that a lot of times the NBA just wasn't on TV a lot, so they felt this was a way. So Wilt Chamberlain from Philly, who was very, very good when he was here uh, in high school, playing for the Warriors kind of, would make sense to, to help grow the game of basketball. Uh, he was traded to the Sixers, then finished out his career with the Lakers. Um, and, I mean, there's just – I don't even know what to do or how to do this guy justice, but just some highlights. Uh, he scored 100 points in a game, um, the most points ever scored in a game. Um, he scored 65-plus points 15 times. Uh, he had 55 rebounds in one game. Uh, in 1961-62, he averaged 48 minutes a game, which basically means he never fouled out in a single game and played every minute of every game. Uh, in 1967-68, he led the league in assist because he wanted to. Um, he said he was sick of hearing the narrative that he's a selfish player, so he went out and led the league in assist. Um, he averaged 50 points per game in 1961-62, uh, which happened to also be the same season he scored 100 in a game. Uh, he was responsible for rule changes. They widened the lane. Uh, they made offensive goaltending illegal. Uh, also changed the foul shooting rules because apparently he would jump from the foul line, drop the ball in, and because the ball was going through the cylinder before um, or the basket before he hit his feet hit in the lane. It counted, so they changed the rule on that. Uh, his number 13 is retired by the Harlem Globetrotters, the Warriors, the Sixers, the Lakers, and the Kansas Jayhawks. Two-time NBA champ, 13-time All-Star, uh, seven-time scoring champion, Rookie of the Year, four-time MVP, career averages 30 points per game, twenty almost 23 rebounds. Um, the one knock against him would be that he always appeared to be playing in Bill Russell's shadow, and I, I kind of question that because, yeah, Bill Russell was good, not taking anything away from him. But Wilt had very, very good stats head-to-head against Bill Russell. The problem is Bill Russell played on one of the greatest teams and one of the greatest organizations ever. So he had a way bigger supporting cast than what Wilt Chamberlain did. So kind of take that with a grain of salt when you hear the Bill Russell versus Will Chamberlain. Uh, and honestly, for me, the, the big debate right now is always the who's the greatest of all time, uh, Kobe, Michael, um, LeBron. And to be completely honest, it's not even close. It's Will Chamberlain, but centers aren't allowed to be in that conversation for whatever reason. Uh, but look up. It's hard to find highlights because of when he played. But if you can look up stats for him, look it up, uh, look highlights, whatever you can. You, the man was just unbelievable. And it's no question he's the greatest basketball player of all time. Uh, but centers don't get the love. So today's Philly Sports his, sp- bleh, today's Philly Sports Black History Spotlight is Wilt Chamberlain. Do yourself a favor. Do some research. Look him up. Like I can't even do it justice. I just read down the highlight stats highlights because that's just how good it is the fact that they changed rules because of him and he decided i want to lead the league and assist and went out and did it that to me shows all you need to know about wilt chamberlain so shout out to you wilt the still sticking with the whole sixers boston narrative what a shitty ending to that game last night. They, there's no way the Sixers should have blown that, blown that game. And I, I don't know whose fault it is, um, whether it's Doc and his rotations, Elton Brand not having guys that are capable of playing on the bench. Um, Tyrese Maxey has been playing with his head in his ass uh, recently, especially last night. Like, what, what's up with him? 
It's almost like he, he just didn't have confidence. Um, but again, like there's nobody to come off the bench. And it's like you have Joe. And I blame Doc because to- Toby was hot in the beginning of the game and then didn't touch the ball really the rest of the game. So that part of that, yeah, it could be the Celtics defense. But Doc, you need to draw up plays to get Toby open when he's hot. I mean, so tough one, but it just proves to me that the Sixers just aren't quite there um, because they the Celtics didn't even play their best game on top of it. So like they're just proved to me that the Sixers and Celtics are just not on the same page right now. Um, and wouldn't it be nice if we had Jason Tatum on our team instead of drafting Markel Fultz? Just saying. Uh <laughs> The Flyers lost 7 nothing to the Devils, so the hits just keep on coming. Um, don't even want to spend time on that because 7 nothing is just ridiculous. Uh, the Phillies uh, played two split squad games. It was good to watch the one against the Yankees and, and actually see baseball being back. Uh, it was interesting with the pitch clock. I'll get more into that when we go into the Phillies preview later in March. But it was pretty interesting, and I think... Good thing spring training games don't count because if you look at the Red Sox uh, Braves game, the Braves ended up losing because their batter did not get into the batter's box and they called a strike three on him with the bases loaded. It was just, it's going to be interesting. Um, I'm anxious to see too once the the big guns go in and there's no shift, how that affects um, things. And somewhere, some way, we talked about him earlier this week, but Ryan Howard is pissed off because there's no shift. It could have done wonders for his career. Um, I mean, he had a hell of a career with the shift. Um, But good to have the Phillies back. Union opened up their season, the defending Eastern Conference champs, 4-1 over the Columbus crew. But let's get into today's This Day in Philly Sports History. On February 26, 1955, the number three ranked LaSalle Explorers beat the Temple Owls 59-57 in overtime at Convention Hall in the second game of a doubleheader. Uh, Muhlenberg beat St. Joe's in the first one. It was the last college game um, where a team used Convention Hall as their home court. Temple had played there, um, and nobody played there. And I'm sure they probably played a game here or there, uh, like for nostalgia or whatever. But until LaSalle went back there in 1989, uh, the building's no longer there anymore, but I know the civic. It was this old civic center. It was one of the other names for it. A lot of wrestling and stuff like that happened there. Um, if you remember, like we'll be here on blah, blah, blah. order your tickets now at the Philadelphia Civic Center. But back to this game: Lasalle fifty nine, Temple fifty seven in overtime. Tom Gola had twenty five points for the Explorers. Hal Lear had number uh, twenty for Temple. His number is retired in the rafters at the Leah Cora Center. Uh, But the reason I'm spotlighting this game and this team is uh, it was the last regular season game for both teams. LaSalle would go on to the NCAA tournament, make a run, get all the way to the championship game, and here's where it's all going to come full circle today. They lost to the San Francisco Dons, who were led by Bill Russell and Casey Jones, who ended up being teammates in Boston. Uh, That San Francisco team was good. Uh, Gola himself would go on to be the number three pick in the draft by the Philadelphia Warriors, go on to be in the Hall of Fame. But on this day in 1955, LaSalle beat Temple in overtime to finish out their regular season and propel them into the tournament. They go to the championship game and lose to Bill Russell and the San Francisco Dons. Shout out to Wilt Chamberlain for our Black History Spotlight. Like I said, there's nothing I can do to give this man justice and what he did. Just go, go. Take yourself down a rabbit hole and, and look it up. Like the stats are just r- ridiculous. And like I said, to me, he's the greatest of all time. Centers can't be the greatest of all time for whatever reason. Um, they have their own little separate wing. But for my money, nobody was better than Wilt. Um, disappointing end to the Sixers uh, game, and pretty much kind of like I said, it shows that. They're not a championship contender. They're they're a great team, but not a championship contender. So let's just have some fun, and hopefully they can somehow get out of the second round. But go enjoy your Sunday, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you.